Our second section of notes in the Nation Divides in Two unit is the South. And the South is the center of agriculture. And through this unit, we're going to look at some developments in the South, namely cotton, the cotton gin, and slavery. So cotton became the leading crop in the South because the North and England had a huge demand for cotton. They, the North and England had factories that depended upon raw material, the raw material of cotton to make their cotton cloth, their textile. Also, at the same time, new methods of processing cotton were being developed, such as the cotton gin. And that was made by Eli Whitney, and you, you probably studied him in technology. He uh, invented a, different, a couple different things. He made guns that had interchangeable parts. And one of his inventions that he really re regretted making was the cotton gin. It allowed cotton to become the most profitable cash crop in the South. Remember, there were four cash crops, tobacco, cotton, indigo, and rice. And cotton quickly became the most profitable cash crop. Southern farmers and wealthy planters invested their money in buying a lot of land, slave, slaves, and equipment for growing cotton. Cotton wore out the soil very quickly, so southern farmers were constantly looking for more and more land to keep growing their cotton. So remember, if there is more and more land being purchased by uh, the United States, somebody's getting pushed off the land, and you should know that that's the Native Americans. So as our country expands west, we keep running into Native Americans. This desire for land causes tension in a lot of different ways. So... Um, this is the reason why, cotton is the reason why southern farmers wanted to expand the use of slavery in other areas like the west, all these new territories um, in that Missouri Compromise area. And also they wanted to expand slavery up in through the northern parts of the west, above that 3630 line. Cotton farmers used slaves to do the physical work of clearing the land, planting the cotton, tending the crops, and harvesting the crops, and processing the cotton. So in all parts of this, uh, slavery plays a huge, the, the major role. And cotton farmers made even more money on cotton because they didn't have to pay the slaves to do the work. So we come to this issue of slave labor. Slave labor is people who do not have the freedom to pick and choose the type of jobs that they perform, and they are not paid for the work that they do. They also have no chance of freedom. So compare slave labor to uh, free labor, and you have a really good CRQ and a really good DBQ question that you're probably going to see by the end of the year. Make sure you know the difference. So here's a picture of the cotton gin. It was invented by Eli Whitney, and it allowed the growing of cotton to become very profitable for farmers. Once cotton became profitable, farmers began buying more and more slaves to grow and process cotton. Before the cotton gin was invented, it took a slave uh, probably a day to, to process about a, cotton, uh, a pound of cotton. And uh, the cotton gin made that a hundred times faster. Um, this cotton comes with all seeds and junk mixed in it, seeds and hulls, and um, to make it clean, that all had to be picked out. Now the cotton gin did that automatically, basically, um, and just made the cotton industry boom. And it made slavery boom. Before the cotton gin was invented, slavery nearly died out. It just wasn't as profitable as farmers hoped it would be. But the cotton gin made that all change. These two line graphs show the relationship between cotton production and the growth of slavery. As you can see, as cotton production increased, plantation owners bought more slaves to work the land and grow the cotton. That's a given. It's, it's right there in black and white. You can see how slavery grew with the production of cotton and vice versa. The production of cotton grew with the expansion and growth of slavery. In 1808, in, this was in the Constitution actually, uh, Congress passed a law forbidding the importation of slaves. However, slaves that were in the U.S. could be bought and sold. So the slave industry never stopped. It never went away. It never weakened. It only got stronger. And that's what made the slave population in the United States different from other nations. There were enough slaves here that the population just took off. It grew and grew and grew. And um, thanks to cotton, the cotton gin, 
the South became known as the Cotton Kingdom. The whole way of life depended on slavery and on cotton. Southern life was based on agriculture. In the North, it was based on manufacturing. And um, because the South just didn't have the factories. And so there's a stark contrast between life in the North and life in the South. So agriculture was the center of the Southern economy and way of life. Most plantations grew cotton. Um, but other farmers still grew crops such as tobacco, rice, indigo, corn, wheat, and vegetables. Um, the rich southern plantation owners also controlled the political life of the South. They ran the government. They pushed for slavery. Um, and they were the ones, the, the poster children for the South. But really, only 3% of the South, of southern whites, owned 50 or more slaves. And 73%, um, three quarters of the southern people owned zero to nine slaves. So, um, you know, slavery was vital to the way of life of the South, even though most people did not own that many slaves or slaves at all. Slaves worked very hard to tend, plant, tend, and pick the cotton. Once it was picked, it was processed, and then it was baled and transported to port cities. From there, it went to the north to textile factories or to Europe to these textile factories. Um, cotton farmers used the slaves to do the physical work, which I already said here's a good picture of uh, slaves doing the manual labor. During the spring and summer, slaves, slaves worked long hours to plow the fields, plant the cotton, and tend the crops. We're talking 14, 16, 18 hour days. More images of slaves harvesting cotton. Image of um, slaves processing cotton. The cotton gin made it possible to clean or process more cotton than ever before. And even though slave merchants could no longer import slaves in the United States, slave auctions were still held as one slave owner would sell slaves to make money. And it was a huge industry to buy and sell slaves. The slave owners and sellers of this time were like our stock market owners, or stock market investors. We're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars were uh, tied up in the slave market. Here's a map showing different products grown and made in the South. The arrows show the spread of cotton farming, and notice what direction it's moving. It's moving west, as our nation grows west. And as the land is used up, dried up, um, nutrients are taken out of the soil, cotton moves west to more fertile land. And here, take a look at this table. You see this in your packet. Um, by this point, I shouldn't have to tell you much about this. You can read it for yourself. It compares the North and the South and the four different issues of tariffs, slavery, the U.S. government, and new territories and states. By the end of studying this, you'd better understand that the North and South are just totally on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to these issues. Even simple things like the U.S. government. <clears throat> the North believes in the federal government, that the federal government should have the power, where the Southern states believe that the sub, that the states should have the power or states' rights. So our nation was on totally opposite ends of the spectrum. And we know, looking back, that the only way to solve this was war. But the, both sides tried to prevent war and to avoid war as much as possible.